Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at franchisee accounting. In the prior session, we looked at the franchisor accounting. In this session, we'll focus on this part of the franchisee. Let's review real quick who is the franchisor, who is the franchisee. The franchisor will be a company like Dunkin' Donuts. And the franchisee is some motivated entrepreneur that wants to start a business, but they would rather use a company name rather than starting their own name. And companies like Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's or Burger King or KFC, what they will do, they will give you the right to operate their business, but you have to pay a fee for that. So in the prior session, we looked at how the franchisor generate revenue, incur expenses. In this session, we would look how the franchisee, the individual that want to be a business owner, through those franchisor. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The first thing you have to do when you, when you start a franchisee is to pay an initial fee. Basically, you have to pay the franchisor a fee, and we talked about that fee in the prior session. It's called an initial franchise fee. You would record this initial franchise fee as an intangible asset. What would that in intangible asset gives you? It gives you the right to operate under the brand name, under the company name, under the company logo of Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's. This asset is usually called franchise rights. And it says initial franchise fee. Sometimes you pay everything up front. Sometimes you might have to make payments but this is called the initial franchise fee. The asset is, it's an intangible asset. It's amortized over the life of the franchise agreement. Unless this agreement don't have a life, it will be an indefinite asset, therefore it's not amortized. But most franchise franchises will have a limited life. They give you the right to operate for a limited amount of time. Then you make the payment. Now, if you're gonna be making several payments, What's going to happen if you're going to be making several payments for that fee, you'll have to discount the payment to the present value to find out how much you actually pay. Because if you have payments, it means interest rate are involved. Oftentimes, you just make one payment, and this will be the payment for the franchise. Don't worry, we're going to work examples illustrating these concepts. What else do you have to worry about when you are a franchisee? Well, you have to worry about an ongoing royalty fee. As you make sales, you have to pay the franchisor a percentage of the sales. And these are recorded as expenses when they are incurred. As you make the sales, percentage of your revenue is considered an expense to you and you pay it to the franchisor. Again, we'll look at journal entries. You might have to pay for advertising and promotion. Payment made to franchisor for advertising are recorded as prepaid until advertising occur, then they are expensed. How does that work? Every year, you contribute to the advertising campaign of Dunkin' Donuts, of the national or the global. Then as Dunkin' Donuts advertise, you benefit from those advertisements. Also, you might, not you might, you will have to purchase goods and services from the franchisor. Well, the cost of these services are operational costs. They are also expensed as incurred. As, as, but inventory, if you purchase inventory, remember inventory is an asset until expensed. And you might also have an initial setup cost and pre-opening cost after you pay a fee. You pay them a cost to train you, to set up the store, to get you ready. These costs incurred to get the franchise operational, they are expensed as incurred unless they result in a recognizable asset. The best way to illustrate all these is to work an example. First, I'm going to start with a simple example to illustrate the concept of how to record the initial fee. A simple example. On January 1st, Adam signs a 10-year franchise agreement with Coffee Bliss and pay an initial franchise fee of 100000 So we're keeping it simple. We're purchasing the asset at the beginning of the year, and we're making one lump sum payment of 100000 
What do we have to do? We're going to debit franchise rights, which is an intangible asset, 100,000. We're going to credit cash or bank 100,000, just crediting the cash account. Then this franchise fee is for 10 years. Therefore, every year we'll debit amortization expense 10,000, credit accumulated amortization 10,000. So simply put, the intangible asset is getting amortized. Now let's change the scenario. On July 1st, Adam signs a five-year franchise agreement with Coffee Bliss. The agreement stipulates the following. Adam to pay $50,000 upfront and five remaining annual payment of $10,000 will be made starting a year from now. So now the, the, the total payments that Adam will have to pay $100,000, but the way it works is something like this. Adam will pay $50,000 today, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Then $10,000, $10,000, $10,000, $10,000, and $10,000. So rather than paying the $100,000 up front, $50,000 now, and five annual payment of $10,000. So what do we have to do with the payments now? Since we have payments, we have to discount the payment to the present value. We're going to assume an interest rate of 5% that we're going to find the present value of the franchise. Simply put, the present value means the fair value of the franchise. How much is it? It's 50000 plus the present value of 10000 and equal to 5. We'll go to the time value of table. I equal to 5%. So if I have five periods annually, interest rate is 5%. If we go to the table, we multiply it by the factor, and the factor will be 4.3303 4 rounding. So the present value of the payment is $43,303.50. Therefore, Adam would debit a franchise right, which is an intangible asset of $93,303.50. So if Adam is paying in total $100,000, and we're saying the franchise is only, we're recording franchise of 93,303. Why the difference? The difference has to do with the time value of money. It's the interest component. Well, what do we do? We're gonna discount, we're gonna debit a discount on notes payable for the difference. We're gonna credit cash or the bank account for the amount that we paid, and we're gonna credit notes payable. So simply put, we are responsible for 50,000 remaining. That's the notes payable. However, the difference between what we're going to be paying, 50000 and the discounted amount of cash flow, which is $6,696.50, this discount is the future interest. This discount is a contra liability. So that's what we have to do. So this is the entry. The franchise is 493303 We have a note of five payment of 100000 Then what we have to do after we after we record the initial asset, we have to amortize it. Now we're amortizing this asset here, 93,303.50. So by December 31st, we have to debit amortization expense, $9,330.50 and credit am accumulated amortization. How did we come up with this? Well, 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 this is the amount of the asset. We'll divide this by five years. Then we multiply by 50%. Why 50%? You have to be careful. We signed this agreement on July 1st. Therefore, we only account for 50% of the amortization because it's December 31st. We are assuming the year end. If it's for the full year, it's 93,303 divided by five, but we are assuming half a year for December 31st. The reason I'm mentioning this because on the CPA exam, they trick you on stuff like that. So if they ask you, what is the balance as of the end of the year for the franchise it's 93,303.5 minus 9,330.35 cent so the, the difference let me just compute the difference this will be the book value of the asset in case they ask because you have to be if my math is right it should be 83,973.15 cent then they might ask you about the notes payable the notes payable is the note, which is 50,000 minus the discount. So when the note is initially recorded, the book value of the note is 43,303.5, which is the discounted cash flow, the discounted cash flow initially. Then we're going to go ahead and make the first payment of $10,000. 
And we're going to assume for this payment that we made the adjustment at December 31st, then we reverse the adjustment. So we have no outstanding notes uh, interest payable. So we're going to debit notes payable credit cash when we make the first $10,000 payment. Then we are going to amortize the interest. How do we amortize the interest? Remember, from the prior slide, we said the book value of the note was $43,303.50. After a year, we multiply this by 5%, the interest was $2,165.18. At this point, remember we have a discount on notes, discount on notes payable. And in that discount, we booked $66.96. Now we are amortizing, we're at $21.65. So now the discount is going down and it's going down and interest rate is going up. Now. After we make the first payment, what would the book value of the notes payable? The book value will be 40,000, the face value minus the unamortized discount. What we're gonna have left, 4,531 rounding. Then we multiply 5% for year two and the interest expense for year two will be $1,773.44. This will be the, disc the interest on year two. Well, year two when we make the payment, the cash will be the same and the interest expense will be $1,733.44. And remember, we have to amortize the asset as well. If it's for a year, you know, we'll take the amount divided by five um, and will be the amortiza amortization. Also, the franchisee will have to be ongoing, um, pay an ongoing royalty. And let's assume Adam agrees to pay 5% of, of his monthly sales as royalty fees. Assume the first month is 50,000, well, what do we have to do? We have to book 2,500. We debit royalty expense, that's profit and loss and income statement, and we credit accounts payable. If we paid it, we credit cash. Now we're saying we're, we are accruing this. So this is how we account for ongoing royalty fees. Also, we, we might have to pay for advertising. So because Coffee Bliss requires the franchisees, which is Adam, to contribute 2% of the monthly sales to join the advertising fund. Well. Adam will have to put away $1,000 for that. Adam will debit expense of advertising expense of $1,000, credit accounts payable of $1,000. Now, if Adam is prepaying, there will be a prepaid for you know several months, but we're gonna assume this is ongoing on a monthly basis. Also, Adam might purchase, might, might will purchase goods from Coffee Bliss. So if Adam buys coffee beans, cups, and other inventory here, for 10,000, what we do is we debit inventory. We don't debit expense yet because it's inventory to be used and we credit accounts payable. Now, obviously inventory eventually is expensed when we sell the items, when we use them up, but for now they are inventory. Also, Adam might incur initial setup costs and pre-opening costs and spend $20,000 on renovation, renovation and training of his staff before op opening. Well, assuming this is all expense, and unless some of the renovation is an asset, what we do, we're gonna debit an expense, credit cash or bank account, or if it's on payable, it's on payable. Now, if these renovation, they have a future value, we'll debit some sort of an asset. What should you do now if you are an accounting student, CPA candidate? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at MCQs. That's gonna help you understand these concepts better. Whether accounting for franchisee or accounting for franchisor, both are important. Both are covered on the CPA exam. Accounting for franchisor was covered in the prior session. What we did in this session, accounting for the franchisee. Study hard, invest in yourself, good luck, and of course, stay safe.